Welcome back. We're still in winter time and there's still some ice on the ground and when you fall you may break something and here to talk about the that is Dr. Martin Favetta with Bluegrass Orthopedics and you're predominantly hand and wrist and arm, correct? Right. I work mostly on arms. Okay. So when we fall, we stick out our hands and I call it a foosh injury, fall on an outstretched hand and end up injuring it, maybe even breaking it. Yeah. So what do you, what this is there Different between fracture, a break, uh, uh, people talk about different things. Well, a, a fracture and a break are the exact same thing. Fracture is break in Latin. Um, so there's really no difference. Uh, some people say breaks are worse than fractures or fractures, are, but they're the same thing. Same thing. But there are different types of fractures when you, especially for the wrist. Right. There are many different kinds of fractures. It depends on how you fall, on which way the bones are angled, and which bones you break. Uh, you can break bones in your forearm. The most common fractures in the wrist are fractures of the forearm. Uh, right up there, the arrow is pointing to the radius. Uh, that's one of the forearm bones. Uh, the little bones that are on the top of the screen, those are the bones of the wrist. Uh, there are eight bones, and you can break each and every one of them, and you can break the bones in your, in your hand, the metacarpals and the phalanxes. So uh, we're talking about fracture, but how do you know if d how do you know if it's broken or how do you know you need to see an orthopedics versus just a sprain or a bruise? Well, sprains and bruises can be dangerous as well. A ligament injury that causes instability can lead to very severe arthritis. So you, you have to be careful. If you have an injury that hurts for more than a day or two, you need to be seen. If there's bruising, if there's significant swelling, it, you need to be seen relatively quickly. You can't wait to see if you can uh, heal on your own. Most minor injuries are better in two or three days with a little ice, a little um, elevation. But if the swelling doesn't go away, you're still having difficulty using your hand. If um, you can't do the things you want to do, you need to be seen. Okay. It's so uh, who's at, who, is there anybody specifically at risk for a broken bone? Well, the fractures in the, in the wrist occur at two different timelines. It happens in younger children. Uh, because they're very active and they fall and they, especially as children grow, the area where the bone is growing is weaker and they have a predisposition to having fractures in the area where the bone is growing. And it happens in older adults because they have osteoporosis. So most of the patients I see today with fractured wrists are either patients over 50 and patients under 15. So treatment. Surgery, casting, combination of, depends on the fracture. It depends on the fracture. If your fracture alignment is good, if the bones are exactly where they need to be, they can be, it can be treated in a cast. The casting for a fracture in an adult is six weeks. Uh, if the alignment is not good, if the bones aren't pointing in the right direction, if the joints aren't smooth, you need to fix that. And that can be, you can set a fracture and put it in a cast. But in most of us, uh, our bones are brittle and the fracture will move back into its pre-setting position and your result is not going to be good. Fixing it with surgery, with using plates and screws, gives very good results and allows people to go back and use their hands sooner than if you were in a cast. Okay. Now, when, when you fall, you injure your arm, you could get arm pain, not necessarily wrist pain, but arm right. pain. There are many causes of arm pain. Yes. Tell me about some. So, um, the most common cause I see is carpal tunnel. That is, we don't know what causes carpal tunnel. There are many things that cause swelling around the wrist. A fracture can cause swelling around the wrist. If that swelling around the wrist puts pressure on the nerve in your wrist, called the median nerve, then you have numbness in your thumb, your index finger, your middle finger, and a part of your ring finger. That's what we call carpal tunnel. It's one of the most common conditions I see. We used to attribute it to typing. Uh, we know today that typing doesn't cause carpal tunnel. Uh, heavy repetitive activity, like working in a factory, can cause carpal tunnel. Uh, having thyroid problems or diabetes or being overweight also causes carpal tunnel. Now, since you bring carpal tunnel up, how do you treat that? Uh, the best way to treat carpal tunnel is with surgery, to take the pressure off the nerve. Um, it's a relatively quick surgery. Patients recover quickly. And if you don't take the pressure off the nerve, the nerve will eventually stop working permanently and lead to weakness and pain in the hand. Now, there's also causes of arm pain that really not the arm. Right. Uh, 
I see a lot of patients whose arm pain starts at the neck. You've heard of sciatica. Sciatica is, in, uh, is pain in your leg that's caused by a pinched nerve in your back. All the nerves in your arm, in your hand, start in your neck. So an irritated nerve in your neck will cause pain in your hand or your elbow or your shoulder. Um, if you think of a nerve, it's not at all like a blood vessel. A blood vessel is just a tube that goes from your heart to your fingertip. Uh, a nerve is a cell, and the body of that cell is in your neck, and the end of that cell, which is three feet long, a microscopic cell that's three feet long is just incredible to wrap your head around. Uh, if you think of the size of that cell, if it was the size of a soccer ball, the extension, the axon of that cell would be three or four football fields in length. Wow. So, so. An, an injury to that structure, um, it's a very fragile structure and it's very easy to damage or irritate. And that's why uh, a pinched nerve in the neck can cause all sorts of problems and symptoms in the hand. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you for the work you do. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.